Nine Principles of the Life of a Philosopher from the Book Alone with Yourself. Marcus Aurelius, 121 to 180, a Stoic philosopher, is regarded as the final of the Roman Empire's five good emperors. The emperor philosopher discusses death indifference, the significance of the present moment alone, and the inconsistencies between fate and free will in reflections. Be like a rock. Despite the incessant breaking of waves on it, it sits still and the turbulent waters around it subside. Stoicism, a philosophical system that emerged in Athens around 300 BC during the early Hellenistic period and remained influential until the end of the ancient world, helped Marcus Aurelius thrive in state matters during one of the most difficult times in the history of the Roman Empire. The following can be regarded the most crucial maxims from Marcus Aurelius' life. Unity with Nature The Stoics believed that nature encompassed both universal and human essence. Living in harmony with our nature entails living in harmony with everything that occurs in the world because it is merely one component of the whole. You must always think of the world as a single being, with a single essence and a single soul. Think about how it all comes down to his own single sensation, how he creates everything with a single desire how everything contributes to the emergence of everything, which is connected and consistent in everything. Indifference to death, ease of transience. Go through one by one and those whom you personally knew, one bury one, the other, the other, and then they die themselves, and all this for a short period of time. In general, one should look at everything human as fleeting and short-lived, that which was yesterday still in its infancy, Tomorrow is a mummy or dust. So, spend this moment of time in harmony with nature, and then part with life as easily as a ripened olive falls, praising the nature that gave birth to it, and with thanks to the tree that produced it. Fidelity to one's activities, work of life, virtue. If following the right mind, you will be diligent, zealous, and loving in relation to the business that you are currently busy with, and not looking around, you will observe the purity of your genius, as if it is time to part with it if you act so, without expecting or avoiding anything, but contented with available activities, in accordance with nature, and heroic love of all that you say and express, you will live well. And no one can stop it. The present is the only important time. Remember also that everyone lives only in the present, negligible moment, yet the rest is either already lived, or covered in obscurity. Everyone's life is insignificant, that corner of the earth where he lives is insignificant, the longest posthumous glory is insignificant, it is held only in several short-lived generations of people who do not know themselves, not like those who have already been disgraced for a long time. Apathy towards glory, honors, and excesses. On fame, look at the mindset of ambitious people, what it is and what it is that they strive for and avoid. On the seashore, one layer of sand is applied to another and hides it underneath. In the same way in life, the former used to disappear very quickly under what comes after it. Persistence in the face of adversity. Let the thought of your life as a whole not confuse you. Do not think about how much and what kind of suffering you will most likely have to endure, but with each one that threatens you, ask yourself the question, what, in fact, in all this is something that could not be endured and endured? You are embarrassed to answer in the affirmative. Then remind yourself that you are not oppressed by the future or the past, but always only the present. The latter will still be diminished if you limit it yourself and reproach your soul if even such a burden is beyond its strength. Tolerance of other people's vices, but rejection of their own. In the morning I should say to myself, today I'll have to face people who are obsessive, ungrateful, arrogant, insidious, envious, uninviting. They owe all these properties to ignorance of good and evil. But after knowing the nature of good, it is beautiful, and the nature of evil, it is shameful, and the nature of the most mistaken, he is not my native blood and common origin, but in spirit and divine determination, I cannot but suffer harm from none of them, after all, 
no one can draw me into something shameful, either be angry at my native, nor hate him. For we are created for joint activity, like the legs, arms, eyelids, upper and lower jaws. Therefore, to oppose each other is contrary to nature, but to annoy people and to be alien to them means to oppose them. Solitude is an important part of life. But man does it wrong. People seek solitude, they seek peace in the countryside, on the seashores, in the mountains. And you are also used to wanting this most of all. All this, however, speaks only of extreme ignorance, for at any moment you can withdraw into yourself. After all, the quietest and serene place where a person can retire is his soul. In particular, a person who finds within himself that, having peered into what, he will immediately be filled with calm. Watch your actions, not the deeds of others. How much leisure is won by one who does not look at what his neighbor has said, done, or thought, but only at what he does himself in order to observe justice and piety in his actions. According to Agatun, one should not seek out the vices of others, but follow one's straight path, not deviating to the side. <laughs>